state law and your regulations. It's important to know about your rules and regulations so you do not violate any rules in your barbershop or in your school um, and get your license revoked or in general. Every barbershop can be inspected at any time during normal business hours. The barber board does not have to let the shop owner know that they will be arriving. Shops must have a minimum of the following. So there's a list on the board that I wrote down. So the first one is going to be one barber pole or a sign. The barber pole is a universal sign, so we need to make sure we have that barber pole posted outside the barbershop or it can be inside and just let people know that it is a barbershop or you can have a sign that says barbershop on your building. One barber chair, and if you have more than one chair, it has to be four and a half feet apart, center to center, and that's so you can be able to maneuver around your customer and not bump into your coworkers or anything like that. It gives you guys space. Now your back bar is going to be your shampoo, your conditioner, and your styling products. Your back bar can be kept at your station or it can also be at your shampoo bowl in which the shampoo bowl for every five stations. So every five stations you need one shampoo bowl in your shop. You need a mirror at your station. If you have more than one station, you need to have more than one mirror. You need to have a mirror at each station. You need to have wet sanitizer in your shop and that is just to sanitize your barber chair, your station, anything that needs to be sanitized. So that's gonna be your Luca side. And I can pass that around for you guys so you guys can see how it's spelled with the side or what it looks like. And that will be your wet sanitizer. Approved germicidal solution. So that's going to be this barbicide right here. And you need to use manufacturer's instructions when using that. Okay. Now we're going to go over universal precautions and procedures. The majority of persons who are infected with HIV and HBV have no cis symptoms. For this reason, it is important that the barber who speaks to barbering consider every client as potentially infectious or exercise appropriate precautions. Wash hands with soap and water prior to serving each client. Have at least two sets of tools to ensure that all instruments can be disinfected correctly after each use. Immediately disinfect any instrument which causes skin abrasion or a cut to the skin. If bleeding occurs, wear your gloves to avoid direct skin contact with gloves or with blood. Use facial tissue, paper towels, or cotton to absorb the blood. Dispose of blood contaminated materials immediately in a double plastic bag and seal it. Wash hands immediately. Thoroughly clean implements wearing gloves before placing any disinfectant solution. If, dis if disinfectant solution becomes contaminated with blood, like the Marty jar, anything that gets contaminated, you need to change it immediately. Disinfected solutions shall be repaired, be prepared accordance with the manufacturer's directions or instructions. Disposable gloves should be worn when handling possible contaminated implements or other materials. Surfaces contaminated with blood shall be cleaned with a solution known to inactivate the virus. Soiled linens, towels, uniforms, etc should be tagged and washed in hot water with an agent known to inactivate HIV or HBV. When possible, disposable towels should be used in proper disposable procedures employed for soiled materials. Sodium hypochlorite, which is a household bleach, is mixed with water, one part bleach and nine parts water. May be used to clean any blood spill. These solutions should be prepared freshly, fresh daily 
Agents labeled as hospital disinfectants are also acceptable cleaning agents. Common agents that destroy HIV and HBC include, but are not limited to, Lysol, hydrogen peroxide, betadine, butyrolysohide, and isopropyl alcohol. It is not recommended to use a sodium hypochlorite alcohol bleach solution if the spill is on carpet or rug. That would be a no-no. Use a disinfectant agent according to the manufacturer's directions. Barbers and barber students who have open wounds or otherwise non-intact skin should cover them with a dressing that will prevent contamination from other sources or wear disposable latex gloves while performing any service. If the effect of a bandage type dressing is infected by moisture, you should replace it immediately. So that's if you get it wet while shampooing your customer's hair, you need to replace it immediately. And then this will be the first aid kit that you will get your dressings from. You have your gauze, your tape, your gloves, your cover. Um, put this glove on. blood on you or get a neck. I just have everything on here um, that will help you with all of that. Okay. Now we're moving on to your examinations. We're going to talk about that. To take the exam, you must apply 15 days before taking your exam. And you need to have your form, which is provided by the board and sworn to by the applicant must include your exam fee, your issuance fee, and any documents deemed necessary to take your exam or be eligible to take your exam. The board schedules a test a year out and the barber board will have those dates for you. Tests are held no fewer than four times a year in which the place is determined by the barber board. So you just need to get that information. So this would be the examination dates for 2022 and 2023. And I'll pass that around for you guys to see that. So they always have a schedule for you letting you know when the examination dates are. Now I also have a form, your application form must include the following um, and I will have a handout for that also, but I also wrote that on the board, it's only your name your address, your birthday, social security number, photocopy of diploma or GED, barber school diploma, certif certification, sorry, of student credit hours, your certification license in a other state if you have in, in another state, Nebraska cosmetology certification, that's if you're doing like dual licensing, two passport photos, and in 
and they check your perm rods and your perm rods may have something wrong with them, maybe a fish hook or they see something that's just being, they don't, they don't want to, they don't feel you're ready to have your barber license, they can reject you on that. That's up to the barber board. Your minimum requirements for school is going to be, you must complete 1800 hours equally or divided over one year. School requires a high school diploma or your GED. Period of classes is up to the school faculty. No more than 10 hours in a day. Classes are taught by licensed instructors and one instructor for per 15 students. Okay, now let's move on to sanitary and safety rules for shops and schools. Now rules must be posted in a visible place in the business, which would be like our blood exposure procedures. We have that placed in the corner over there in the classroom. We have some in the break room and some on the floor where the students do um, most of their customers when they're cutting hair. So that's available. Water waste must supply hot and cold water and must be pumped into city water and sewer systems. So at the school, they have running water. You must have cold and hot water um, so you can perform services like shampooing or if someone gets a chemical service. So that would be the same way in your barbershop. You need to have hot and cold water so you can perform your services if you do chemical service or offer that at your barbershop or if you're just shampooing a customer after a haircut. You just need to make sure you have hot and cold water. Signs must have either a pole or a sign that shows you are a barbershop. So you need to have a sign that says barbershop on your, on your building, in the window. You need to have your barber pole. It can be outside or in, inside your barbershop, like where it's visible, where a customer can see it through the window. Or you can just have your name of your barbershop and name barbershop, like Kenrose Barbershop. You just need to have a sign that says so. Schools must have separate place for barbers, which at the non-academy, we have a separate place for our barbers and then a separate place for the cosmetologists. Anything that is used to stop bleeding must be in a liquid or powder form, which is going to be your styptic. Not talking about sanitizing our headrest. Now our headrest is on our barber chair, so we need to make sure we sanitize those and they need to either be covered or sanitized after each client. And that's just to make sure that we're keeping everything clean and Every barber or student will need to be neat and clean, showing no signs of illness. So if you are sick or don't feel good, you don't need to come to school or you don't need to come to your barbershop. You need to just keep everybody safe. You need to keep everybody healthy, keep everybody clean, everything clean and sanitized. Must, you always must wash your hands with soap and water between clients. That is a must. And that's just with COVID-19 and the pandemic, we need to make sure that we keep everybody safe. Um, our customers, anybody that comes into our barbershop or our school. Okay, so now we're going to talk about our implements and how we're going to sanitize those. Now, all shops will use sanitizer, which is going to be, again, your Lupicide. That's going to be your wet sanitizer. And you are to spray down your station. You can spray down your chair. You can spray down whatever is uh, has, like, hair and debris on it. You need to spray it down, wipe it off so it can be sanitized. All tools that come in contact with the client must be sanitized before use on another client. So that would be your cool care or your clipper care. That's what you would use to sanitize before you bring your next customer into your chair. Now your three steps to sanitation. This is gonna be used when the barber board comes into your barber shop. This is what they're gonna ask you. What is your three steps to sanitation to see what you do with your implements and how you sanitize them. So the first step is gonna be Smoothly wash and wash your implements with soap and water. You're going to do that. You're going to get the clogger for the sink, put soap and water in it, swish your little implements around, make sure you're getting all that hair and debris off of that. 
once you're done with that, you're going to rinse. That will be the second step. And you're going to make sure you rinse it thoroughly, get all that hair and debris off of there. Complete the immersion of the combs, brushes, bars, and a fresh and clean, effective dermatidal solution. So that dermatidal solution should be in your Barbie jar at your barbershop. Or if you're in school, it'll be on your station. Um, you need to immerse your implements in there. And you have to follow the directions according to the label of how much you need to put in there. Okay? Now the implements, once they are dry, you need to make sure that you dry them. You can dry them with a towel, put them in storage wherever you store your implements, or you can put them on a rack and let them dry almost like a, not a towel rack, drawing a blank right now, um, what you um, dry your dishes with. You can also like put your implements there. That's something to just have somewhere so they can be dried and then put them away in a storage. The use of formaldehyde is strictly prohibited in the sanitation process. The bristle type neck dusters, the ones that you see on your Facebook or your Instagram or your Snapchat, those are prohibited or not capable of being sanitized, so we do not use them. We are not allowed to use those, not even in a school or a barbershop. No pets or animals shall be permitted in the shop except for your fish. So if you want to have fish in your barbershop, that's permitted, and your service animals are permitted in the barbershop. Now, are there any other questions about the general rules and state law and regulations that I have went over in class today? Oh, man. Thank you. 17 minutes.